Oh, that's right. Eight-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA. Played for 22 years. I just love getting that in there every time. Vince Carter joins the show this morning. Um, Vince, look, we started the show talking a little bit about the Lakers' loss last night. Wasn't pretty. And then, of course, LeBron had some comments afterwards. The guys weren't super thrilled with him. It was a little bit of the throwing the rest of the team under the bus. I don't know if you heard him, but the gist was he knows how he'll react. He doesn't know about everybody else. What did you think? That's, that's Le LeBron. Uh, you know, yeah, he may annoyed and, and everybody might not be happy with his comments but you know we've seen him do this before it's just in his mind he's motivated i'm challenging you publicly which you know all the time i'm not going to say that's the right way to go you have to kind of know your locker room but at the same time lebron doesn't care he's like i'm going to be ready to play you follow either follow my lead or you know you get left behind type thing and you know after you know lebron knows how to bounce back after an, an embarrassing loss he's yeah. going to come out aggressive he's going to come to play and he's going to expect that from everybody else. If not, there again, go sit on the bench and watch what I do. <laughs> That's, I, I mean, I, that, I, yes, he's the one that seems the most amped. Um, Draymond Green, the big return of Draymond Green tonight. He missed, of course, the five games due to the suspension. Um, he was asked about it, said he has no regrets, never does. Um, <laughs> his behavior, would you say that at this point it's a little detrimental to what the Warriors are trying to do? I'm going to start out by saying that's a wild boy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a wild boy. And, and, I mean, the way, I mean, I get the fact he's like, I'm going to protect my teammate at all costs. Okay, cool. But, but at some point, like, you got my man in, like, the Larry. See, like, you, you see, it's almost night-night time. Like, he was tapping out. out. He was tapping Listen, out. Listen, if you really watch that clip, it has like, nothing to do with his teammate. No, nothing. It has nothing to do. It had nothing to do with his teammate. His he teammate got, was fine. He got pushed, Luke, and he, he went to go get his lick back. He saw, exactly. He saw an opportunity. He's like, oh, it. Now, right now. This is my chance. Come here, boy. Yeah, what you said now? Come here, boy. Oh, okay. yeah. So long. Yeah. <laughs> so long. It was awkwardly long, actually. Like, yeah. I always wonder, I mean, look, there are guys on there that are never going to say anything, but then there are guys of equal stature, if not greater, like a Steph, for example. Or if the Tra coach. Yeah, yeah, or the coach. Like, what? do the you say something? Long. Does anyone say anything to him? Like, how does it work in a locker room with a guy like Draymond? I think, you know, they're, they're, they have respect, uh, the respect of each other where a Steph... Uh, I mean, obviously, Steve Kerr said it publicly. Like it was entirely too long. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> we, we don't we don't need this. Like he he has to feel, find a way to dial it back. So I think they can have that conversation conversation with him, and he trusts and he will allow those guys to do that. Now, if that was like a Jordan Poole, like nah, <laughs> no, <laughs> not so much. By the way, but, as, you know, a, but, as a but teammate, one as but, a teammate, you love it, right? Like you love that he's getting your back. But to an extent, now and then missing games becoming a games, distraction, yeah. Yeah. then it's yeah. a problem. Yeah, five. Yeah, five. they're now like eight and nine, and tenth in the West. Like you know, they're very capable. They, they're known to having slow, slow starts, where they can click it on. But it's like you kind of got to deal with the media now. You got to find your way again, which they can do. I, I I know that, but like you want. You got to find your consistency because I feel like if they're going to do it again, this is going to be the toughest year. I feel like every year from mm. here on out, we're going to say this is the toughest year. Like last year, like, yeah, right. like this is going to be the toughest year. VC, mm. last week, Chris Paul ejected by Scott <laughs> Foster. CP3 after the game says it was personal. So what was your take overall in that situation? It's, I mean, uh, I mean, at, at some point, I mean, this, I, I look at the history of it and like, like, come on, man. Like it, we know it's personal. Uh, I don't, I don't, I mean, I feel like every time you see that together, you expect a, a Chris Paul loss. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the one thing that, you know, I've had a situation <laughs> in uh, with the referee. Who was it? Uh, in, in, yeah, I don't Go remember. on. Uh, in, what did in, it rhyme in Detroit. with? Um, Donahue? Was his last name Donahue? No, no, no. We had some spats. <laughs> I mean, I've had some with Joey Crawford, but not, that's not the one. But nevertheless, it, 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 it wasn't Joey Crawford, but it was a back and forth, back and forth. And, you know, I'm like, all right, if you're going to say what you're going to say under your breath where it, it, nobody can hear you, the referee, I have the right to rebut. Hmm. And you can't use that against me. So, hmm. I, I mean, I, you can tell that definitely was a part of that. Plus, they had history and, you know, from what Chris Paul said, it has something to do with his kids. So, 
I agree. I agree what? with VC. Like, if you, if you're a referee and you're gonna engage me and we're gonna go back and forth, you yeah. can't use the power of your whistle Fair. when it doesn't go your Once way. Once you feel like you're losing, yeah. 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 When exactly. you feel like you're losing that argument, don't use your whistle as your way out of this and getting me out of there. Some referees, you give them credit. If we're going back and forth and no T's called and we continue to play it. I'll earn respect for that referee, but if we're talking trash to each other and I get a one-up on you and you yeah. decide to throw me out, I can't respect that's that. That's why I love like a Tony Brothers or a Zach Zarba. They'll talk shit back they, to they you. Talk, they they talk, talk, they talk. And that's who I was going to use as an example. Yeah. He'll talk junk. You go back and forth and then he'll say, that's enough. And you right. know, like, that's enough. And he'll walk away, huh. you know, yeah. uh, you know, as, as a, you know, a veteran official. Right. And then obviously if you come back and you, you continue that conversation, then, you know, it kind of goes whatever. And you know, there's like scouting reports too for refs. Like you know who you yeah, can yeah. mess with, you who you're who supposed to joke wow. around with. Like the, you, you don't mess with Joey Crawford. Joey you know? Crawford no. teamed me up Steve one time. Jabby. For, did he he teamed me up one time, Vince, for looking at him. Well, yeah. the Tim Duncan of it all. We're yeah, just like, smiling. Yeah. Right, and they lean <laughs> into. Y'all remember? Y'all remember Joey, uh, St uh, Steve Jabby oh, threw yeah. out the yeah. the the, the, uh, um, the mascot. Yeah. Uh, the Spurs. <laughs> yeah. Like you know, you just knew who not to mess with. It's ridiculous. But Dick Bavetta was another guy that you can have your argument. He lets you say what you want to say. And he'll back off. He's right. like, that's enough. I'm giving you a chance. Yeah. So. And Scott Foster, he leans into it. Like, yeah. He knows Facts. he's he knows he's a villain, and he kind of carries himself like that when he's refereeing basketball games. It's unfortunate that it's gotten to that point with Chris Paul, but I promise it's another 40, 50 guys that has the same issue with Scott Foster. <laughs> that's a big number, there. for sure. For sure. Uh, Vince, last week we saw the Spurs Clippers game pop. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> he literally grabbed the mic like it was Lake Hal versus Oviedo and told the crowd to stop <clears throat> booing. Have you ever seen that in your career? No. Oh, in the uh, NBA, maybe. In, uh, I, I, if, if I'm Kawhi, you, you kind of appreciate it. I mean, you forgot. I, I, go, I went back to Toronto and I got booed. So <laughs> if, if, you know, if there was a coach, you know, if Sam Mitchell or any coach <laughs> they're after like hey man but it's it's a part of the game it's you know uh, i think they have a lot of respect for him it's kind of the thing you do so and, and you see what the fans like everybody respects pop but at the same time they're like pop you trip yeah, yeah. Boo, and it kept booing yeah. so right. it's like it did you know it did I, I get what he's trying to do but i also understand after hearing what Pop says, he's like, we don't want to poke the bear because he he knows what superstar players can do. You don't want to motivate them and give them <laughs> ammunition to, because they're a young team and they weren't going to probably win that game anyway. No. But at the same time, you know. Oh, he said that? That's it, a great spin The bear job. was poked. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's he, said that, he said that at the end. He's like, you yeah. know, you know, we, you don't poke the bear. And they're like, what do you mean? I mean, I said it. You don't poke the bear if you don't know what that means. I mean, I understand what he's saying. We're not trying to give him yeah. more motivation because if you're going back to San Antonio and they're booing, just like for me, I, I was going back to Toronto and they're booing. That was more motivation for me to kind of get busy, you know, and I definitely want to win. I already wanted to win. You know, but now, like, you booing and calling me this, that, you know. That's, that's, right, a, that's, a, spin, that's a spin job. That's a great, that's yeah. a great spin. Well, well, like play, well played. Yeah, yeah well Pop played. Thinking, man. He probably had all, <laughs> all half time to think of that one. Real play. <laughs> man, it was, it was a moment I'll never forget. That's for sure. Um, Sunday, we had a Marcus Smart yell. I love a Marcus Smart yell. But at his teammates during a timeout, <laughs> yelling that what they were doing was embarrassing. Um, are you on board with the delivery of the message? <sighs> Everybody delivers a different way. I, I, me being a veteran with a young team for a lot of years, uh, you know, you, Marcus Smart has been to the NBA Finals. He understands how tough and how hard it is to get there. Yeah, I guess, and I know he sees the potential in the Grizzlies, who's been very close. So he's not letting this team slip and get away with anything. So, yes, I mean, you can look at it as harsh, but, like, you know a teammate. Like, you, we all had teammates who just – the, you know, they get amped when they talk. Like, that's what it is. And you take it with a grain of salt. So, today's NBA, some some people, fans, or media, and players can't handle that. But it's like, I, you know, I, I know it's coming from a pure place. Like, he wants to win. We know Marcus Smart is all about winning. It's nothing personal. Yeah. VC, I got to ask. Despite the y'all just gonna let me say it, not gonna rebuttal. No, we thought you did. Honestly, nah, that was a just kiss. <laughs> 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 you, you, I got you covered all the bases, bro. I, I gotta, I gotta ask. Despite, despite the courts, I was critical of the in season tournament. I, I wasn't, despite I wasn't a big fan. The of courts are trash. But listen, now that we're getting down to the nitty gritty, I'm, I'm enjoying the games. I'm, in, I'm enjoying Correct. the excitement around it. What do, what do you think about the tournament? Well, you can see this, the strategy behind this. And, you know, um, 
you see teams are making sure that guys are ready to go for the in-season tournament more so than the regular game. So they know Tuesday and Friday. So I have Wednesday and Thursday to get guys healthy or back or play the big, be ready to play the big minutes because it does mean something. And, you know, regardless of we say, you know, guys are making, I'm enjoying hearing superstar players who are making 30, 30 million or more saying, they, one that they're, they're they, you know this this matters. This is a chance to win something, but they want to do it for their other guys who right. don't get the chance to make a, a, a quick. Five, that's a quick five hundred. Mm. Right. And, that's, and that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted to ask you. Would you would you give max effort for the in season tournament? Is Absolutely. that five hundred k an incentive to you if you were a player? Absolutely. I mean, because you, you know, and, and a lot of guys are playing for a lot of things. So throughout the season, like you, you, I mean, obviously you're winning something. You know, when you win championships, this opens up doors for other opportunities later on, other contracts and so on and so forth. But, yeah, I'm all for, for going at it, and I definitely would. It's another opportunity to win, you know. you know, if, if you don't get the opportunity, and I think, Lou, you said this earlier, some of these teams like a, I mean, the Magic or the Pacers who already mm-hmm. who are playing great basketball, they get a chance to win this tournament, you know, but maybe not have a chance in the world, <laughs> you know, to, to mm-hmm. win the NBA Finals. But you're winning something, and you walk away with something, and now you're putting people on notice. Now you're you're you, you win an in season tournament. You know what that does for you for free agency? Mm-hmm. Like it, it just it opens doors, and it, it, now you're starting to get guys in. Some of these guys too, they're not making they're making one two million dollars. That's a huge chunk That's of money right. for them to get for not yeah, even for not playing bonus. too. You know, That's what I mean? a chunk of money no. for anybody. Oh, yeah. anyway. we would all take yeah. it. That's just some of money, man. Like you, just think, if you win the in season tournament, you get five hundred thousand, and you don't make the playoffs. But guess what? Listen, that's what I, I don't think for, I don't bro. think my five hundred makes it out of Vegas. <laughs> my five oh, wow. don't make it out of Vegas, VC. Is this going to be like a playoff <laughs> share where you can give it to the staff or give it to the? Will we see no, that? No, staff gets well, some no, too. This though. is this is in season. I know. So, will we see like uh, Steph Curry give his five hundred grand no, to one of the no, young guys? They that, could. This is yeah, I mean, no chance. Why? This is an in season tournament. I think so. They're getting paid first and fifty. Maybe not five hundred thousand. A nicer Christmas gift. A bonus. We, I mean, still, you, like you, you, give him 10, you give him 10, 20 like you would do uh, for a playoff. Like bonus. a playoffs, yeah. Exactly, like you oh, I like it. I didn't, I'm not giving you all I 500. I think the, someone, the, the, oh, hell no. the high players, I almost, it, they got to do that. That's, oh, I didn't think <laughs> Hey, Lou, I'm going to say this about some of the courts. I, I heard you a couple of days hmm. ago say about the courts. Some of the courts are hideous. But I, 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 I like, I, but I, it I like the difference. I like the, the separation. It, it differentiates, correct. You're like, if you don't know the schedule, like, you know, we obviously know the schedule, but if you don't know the schedule, you turn it on, like, what's up with the court? Yep. Ah, it's the end season tournament. You're probably going to see some pretty good basketball, and you're probably going to see your favorite player play. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> it, it gives a, it, it differentiates. I mean, I think go back and just kind of work on a few of the courts. It's but the I red. Like the, yeah. the all red is yeah, angry. I know, I know. It's I know, triggering, you know, like, I think. I'm changing, I'm changing my position. I'm, I'm in. Oh. You're so open-minded no. these days. Oh. Who I'm, are I'm, you? I'm, listen, once you get to know me, you know I'm an open-minded <laughs> guy. I live freely. Yeah. I'm in. I'm enjoying the in-season tournament. So I, I was very critical of it because I thought it was gimmicky. And a lot of my 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 feeling about it was because of the courts. Yeah. If they, mm-hmm. listen, calm the courts down a little bit. We get it. Right. Leave the trophy in the middle of mm-hmm. something. Maybe do something like that. Let's calm the colors down. It's hard to watch. It's hard to look Those at. Court. But it's the fans just, are yeah. in. It's just couple, one. A couple of courts have too much pop. Oh, yeah. It's just one. It's one big hallucination when you're watching these courts. It is. <laughs> well, the red was, yeah, that Toronto red, court was red tough. On red stuff. I'm red sorry, on red. that Toronto Raptors court was tough. Bulls is tough. I think Bulls and, yeah, those are, mm mm. Mm-mm. Anything with Carolina Blue is tough, too. Okay, there you go. That's that. fair. That is fair. <laughs> <laughs> BC, you're in Orlando, right? Your team's won seven games in a row. Oof. They're second best in the East, third best in the NBA overall, one of the best teams in the league so far. Have you caught Orlando Magic fear? Fever, I should say. I guess fear. I definitely I do some work with them, so I, I definitely watch them and support them, but the power ranking, they're still seven. I don't understand. You got to explain that one to me. But they're playing great basketball. And, you know, and I'm going to speak from my experience first. When I got the opportunity to play in the Olympics and came back the next year, the confidence that I had, you know, as a player, I think we're seeing that from Paulo. Like, he got the opportunity to play, you know, in in the um, Olympic trials with some great players, seeing how they prepare themselves, how they – uh, how they work with the game, how they make other players, whether they're superstars player or not, better. And you're seeing that from him. He's averaging, what, 19.8? But also Franz is averaging like 19. You know, he, he's getting it done. He's, he's playing with a lot of confidence. 
He's getting off the ball when he needs to, and he understands when it's my time, it's going to be my time. But he's allowing another great scorer like Franz to, to flourish as well as everyone else. I think another one, Cole Anthony. Mm -hmm. Buying into his six-man role has been huge for his game and the team because he, he wanted to be a starter. He kind of lost his spot. He would pout a little bit. Then all of a sudden, you see him buy in, and he's really taking off because he understands he is the guy in that second unit. <laughs> Shout out Jamal Mosley, too, because he's one of the... Absolutely, man. There's not he's many more coaches it, cooler than him. Right. And, I mean, he's done a great job with a young, young bunch of guys with a lot, you know, doesn't have a lot of experience. Coach of the year, he should be up. Uh, he should be in the talks for it. I also love that Orlando's crushing because it gives us an excuse to bring out some vintage uh, video, which is obviously one of my favorite things to do. When you were there, you guys, Dwight <laughs> Howard, you had a pregame ritual. Oh man, I mean, what the magic we, show. Yeah, the magic. We show. called it the magic show. Yes, mm. it was. Uh, it was. It, it got out of control me, for a while. Instead of me. <laughs> yeah, hey man, look. <laughs> so it, it it started like off like we literally had a show uh, where we had a presentation. And it literally, you know, we had, yeah, this is where it started right here. Jason Williams was kind of our dictator, believe it or not, white chocolate. It got to the point to where we're in the layup line. Jay Will would be in the tunnel from somewhere doing hook shots. Out of, uh, it was out of control. Oh it was out of control after a while. But we, had, we were a very good team. And when, once Stan Van Gunning got wind of it, he kind of, kind of like, hey, tone it down or I'm shutting it down type thing. <laughs> Because Stan just cares about, obviously, X's and O's and what you do on the court. Uh, but we were winning, and we were getting the job done. And when the, when the ball was up for play, we were locked in. So, you know, but, yeah, that was the magic show. I love that. I love that team growing up there, VC. We also, we both played with Trey Young uh, in Atlanta. You a little bit longer than I did. He's a little bit of a lightning rod amongst fans. <laughs> do you think he, you can build a championship team around Trey Young? I think... I, 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 I'm gonna. I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking now, Trey Young, as before. At first, I'm like, hey man, you got to tone it back. But I understand what Trey was trying to accomplish as a young guy coming in, proving, oh, he's too small, he's not able, able to, you know, he won't last long. And you know, it, the man got talent, man. Like he's averaging ten assists, second in the league behind that man Halliburton, who is balling, by the way. I know we'll talk about him, but I think you're starting to see Trey understand. He has to get other guys involved. He's not there yet, but at the same time, he's toned down the the the, the crazy shots, the bad shots. Uh, I I think he's you know Lou, you can speak to this as well, but I think he's given a little more effort on the defensive end. It's it, it's a little more important to him. It kind of matters. I, I, I mean, you have times I watch the Hawks as well. Sometimes I'm like, come on, Trey, yeah. look, look, just a little effort just to give your bigs a chance to. You know, get in defensive position to help you mm -hmm. and uh, whatnot. But uh, you know, Lou, what, what have you seen? I, I just I feel think like he's, for Trey, he's taking baby steps. Mm. Right. I just I feel like for him, stability is going to be important, man. He's on right. his he's on his fourth coach in his young career, yeah. and so you know, I've spoke to it. He, he has some trust issues when it comes yeah. to when it comes to coaching because he hadn't had anybody to really take him under their wing and really give him the game and give him the guidance that's needed for him to get from point A to point B in his career. And so that's that's been my whole thing, just that stability that he hasn't had yet and I think that's why he's I think he's doing a little better with this this year because he's he had coach last year now he has a full a whole summer and then the, this season kind of the focal point they can get together and kind of get on the same page so hopefully you know it, this lasts for a good a good little while and he continues to buy in for sure all right last time we talked um the Clippers had just traded for James Harden but we hadn't seen him yet in uniform um they're now four and seven since he joined the team but four and two since Russ went to the bench, and then we had the loss last night. So right now, your assessment of this Los Angeles team is what? I'm gonna start off by saying this: shout out to Russ, man. Mm -hmm. Like, that's 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 big of him because you know you know we we know how Russ is. Like Russ wasn't going to teams, or Russ was like, I'm not going to the bench. Like he put his pride to the side for the good of the team, um, giving you know Harden an opportunity to kind of play himself into shape. And I think that's what it is. It's like it's a lot to me as a point guard. It, it, you know, you have a lot of response. scoring point guard at that. You know you can score, but you also have two dogs, shoot, or more than that. But you have Kawhi, you have PG, so you got to make sure you get those guys involved and figure out how to get your shots and how to get Big Zoo, you know, involved and how to make, obviously at the time, make it work with Russ, uh, you know, and, and that, that um, with the four of them plus Zoo. So shout out, I, I, when I heard that, I was like, 
good for him. And I think it's freed up Russ's mind hmm. because he doesn't have to keep hearing it from the media or people talking about it. It's like, you know what? Nah, I'm, I, my man needs to, you know, to get right. I'm going to find a way to get right. And it's, it's worked out, and you're starting to see them turn the corner a little bit. Team Russ. Uh, worst loss last night, Lakers, Clippers? Lakers. Boom. See, that's okay. I, I just I just think, like, you know, you're talking about – you, you, you're talking about, uh, first of all, you have LeBron James there and you have a guy who's going to come to play every day. You, you know, I, I just I just think, you know, opportunities like this matters for someone like Anthony Davis more so than LeBron. Like, you know, you, you're talking about the next man up. This is, you know, you know, this is your opportunity. This is your team. You're talking about you want to take the step. You want the keys. Eventually, you have to rise to this occasion. I mean, Joel Embiid is playing at an MVP you know, um level and this year already so you know that's just a tough that's a tough matchup not saying that you know this it, it's a bad it's a tough loss it's, it's a bad loss i think I, I think philly took the fight away from him. yeah period crushed him crushed triple him. double in three quarters God, I know. Mm. I know. So I you up. said he's gonna get a double double yeah i, I underestimated him. I, didn't think, I didn't think about that matchup though that that that's your position you gotta stand you gotta you, gotta, you gotta hold your ground that's your position that's, I feel I like a meme right now. I'm like, mm, okay. Uh, Vince, as always, we will talk yes. soon. Uh, we appreciate you. Pleasure. Thanks for the time.